If you go to the southern coast of Pakistan where it meets the Arabian Sea, you will see two strangely shaped peninsulas where you have these long elevated terraces connected to land by just a thin section of sand. So in today's video, let's investigate how these hammerhead shaped peninsulas formed. So this southern coast of Pakistan is known as the Makran Coast, and it is where two tectonic plates are colliding. Specifically, it is where the Arabian plate is colliding with the Eurasian plate and forms this region known as the Makran Fold Belt, which is where the Arabian plate is subducting underneath the Eurasian plate, and that forms the many fold mountains that we can see in southern Pakistan today. These long mountains and long valleys is great evidence that these are fold mountains. And as the Arabian plate is colliding with the Eurasian plate, some sections of crust are breaking off and becoming what is known as accretionary wedges. And an accretionary wedge is essentially a spot where chunks of crust from the plate that's subducting have been broken off and merged with the other plate. So as you can see in this diagram, the subducting plate was carrying along marine sediments, and these marine sediments got scraped off and piled into the spot where it was colliding with the other plate. And so these marine sediments, which have become a part of the Eurasian plate, are what these peninsulas are primarily made out of. They are, they are mostly sandstones and limestones. But that still doesn't explain how this hammerhead peninsula formed. But this also relates to the subduction of the Arabian plate underneath the Eurasian plate. So as the Arabian plate is subducting underneath the Eurasian plate, it is creating a series of fault lines. And you can actually see these at the areas where the coast is super straight. These are all different thrust fault lines. And thrust fault lines are areas where older rock is being pushed on top of newer rock. And so this thrust fault line has created the structures we see here. As you can see, these terraces are pointed southward towards the coast. This is evidence that this section of the crust was thrusted to the north, and now is on top of the old crust, which is below the surface. Now, this kind of structure is what is known as a horst. A horst is essentially a region of land that has either been uplifted around the surrounding terrain, or has remained stationary where the surrounding terrain is dipped, and the and the crust around the horst, which has dipped down, or where the horst is uplifted above, is known as a graben. And so if you think about our terrace here, it got thrusted up from the ocean floor as a horst, and the surrounding terrain acts as a graben because it is lower than the uplifted region. Now one question I immediately had after learning that this was a section of a thrust fault was, why doesn't it continue? Why is this fault block just seven miles across? Wouldn't you expect it to be, since the fault runs across the entire section, at least a little bit longer? Well, the answer to this question is complicated, but it's all due to the differences of the marine sediment and the faulting in this region. So first off, the accretionary wedges that would have been deposited around here would not be an even amount of sediment through the entire thing. Different sections would be broken off unevenly and as more sediment. And also, fault lines are not one long structure. Fault lines are typically split up into many different sections, and you can actually see this here. For example, we have this straight coast here, which is a fault line, but then, as you can see, it cuts more south, and then there is a different fault line. So these peninsulas are at a different section of a fault line. And so the reason that these ridges do not continue throughout this entire coast is just because of the uneven fault lines and uneven accretions that occurred. But that still doesn't explain why they form a peninsula like this. So what we are seeing here as this ridge used to be completely cut off from the land, but this thin sandy isthmus known as a tumbolo formed and connected it to the land. So the way that this tumbolo formed all has to do with how waves interacted with the newly formed island here. So when waves were coming from the open sea, it would hit the island and have to refract around the island, causing the waves to come from both sides. So this is like sound interference, where waves from two different sections are colliding and slowing down the waves, causing it to deposit any sand or sediment that it has picked up. And so this process has created the curved tombolos that we see today. 
And so I just think the formation of these Gwadar and Ormara peninsulas are super interesting, where a plate accreted its sediment onto the ocean floor, then that sediment got faulted and became ridged islands, and then waves refracted around the islands and formed the sandy tombolos that we see today. But that is going to be all for today's video. If you learned something new, please subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.